Basically, I built this around about the same time as I built the other amp. Almost concurrently, I guess you could say. I, my, you know what, the details are foggy with me, but anyway, I, I built this around the same time, around 10 years ago, and um, I used it back at my old house because I had a bigger room. Uh, I had the room I had actually where my speakers and all that were was about the same size as the house that I currently have now. So that'll tell you how much space I had there. I don't have the same amount of space as I do now. So I really haven't been using a big subwoofer. And this amplifier now it has been kicking around in my basement ever since. And it's a little worse for wear. I've got this problem where I kind of lose respect for the things after I finish building them. And... Uh, this certainly shows it. I'm just going to turn it around a little bit so you can see the shape of it. It's almost like a computer tower case. The shape, the, the front is rounded over here. This is the power switch here, which is just a momentary one. I made this actually. Again, sticking to the theme of making everything as much as I can. I'm going to pull the lid off here to expose the guts. Now this is not screwed on. At one point I had two screws here and then I meant to add screws down on the bottom here on the side but I couldn't figure out a way to make them look good. So I was trying to do some kind of a tricky latch mechanism to hold it in place. As you can see it's it, it used to be really nice and shiny before it got dirty. I'm just going to brush a little bit of the dirt off here with the brush, but I, which I shouldn't be doing, but obviously it needs work. I mean, it needs to be repolished again. But this is made mainly out of hardboard, the sides, and the front is actually curved. You can see the curve cuts in here. And then the top is also hardboard. And I added a piece of MDF on the inside here to thicken it so I could round over the corners like that and make it look good. What you see here with the holes happening is what's known as a chimney for cooling. Uh, the concept is that the heat would come off of these heat sinks that I have here and um, as they warm up, they would set up kind of a convection current that would pull the air up through these uh, pipes. These are actually an old pole from, you know, the net you use to clean out the pool. And then they come up through the top and I rounded them over. And you can basically just see right through that. I'll try to aim it so you can. Anyway, so that's the cover and the chimney. I also cut these slots in here for more ventilation. So it's kind of neat. The case is probably the most impressive looking part of this. Until you get on the inside. And here I have, um, like I said, a lot of it is covered up. The back panel is a piece of stainless steel again, except this one is from a kick plate. So it's a little bit thicker, a little bit more clean, I guess you could say. But I cut it the size and I drilled all the holes and I mounted everything in there that needs to be. And what is mounted on there is up here is a, I think this is a link with what's known as a link with transform circuit. But um, I'm not positive. I think I changed it at some time. I think I started with a link with transform and then I changed it to something else. But what this does is it isolates the um, low frequency component in the signal and it really boosts it up. So what you have happening is you have the subwoofer being overdriven by these bass frequencies. And what it does is it, um, it gets more bass out of a smaller package, basically. I don't know if this works at this time because it's been years since I plugged it in and tried it. Chances are it still does. And I've got these power wires connected. Um, I'm going to try to explain this a little bit. I'll take this up and hopefully I don't pull anything apart. And I think, yeah, I've got a connect, quick connect connector there. And this is full of dirt. It's falling out my hand. This that you see here is the power amplifier, actually. And these are the output transistors here. 
And what I did, and what makes this kind of interesting, is that these are tied right to the heat sink, as in they um, get their power, their, their, their voltage, from the heat sink itself. That's why I had these wires that stick up here attached to them. When this is on and running, these halves of the heat sink are electrified, and I've got this orange strip of plastic in between uh, glued on with silicone, and that's what isolates them from each other. It's kind of an interesting way to go. What you have with a typical power transistor is the back panel is um, conductive. It's usually attached to the collector, I think, if I remember correctly. And there's also a pin that's the collector as well. But instead of using the pin, I use the back panel, and that makes it so that the transistors have better contact with the heat sink and will you know, release that heat a lot quicker. And as you can see, there's quite a few of them here. Okay, I'm trying to figure out a little bit more of this. This is the power amplifier board here. This is the output stage. We covered that. There's another box over here that's covered and I have to believe that that's probably the soft start circuit again. And um, the power supply, uh, I don't know. I'm not sure. Man, I wish I could remember this stuff clear. And I don't want to break it because I don't have the ability to fix it anymore. I'm going to take this cover off next. This has the power transformer inside there, plus the smoothing capacitors. Once again, this is an aluminum cover, and to, con you know, to continue the ground, I had a wire right here that uh, attached right there. So this should come right up. The power leads, like I said, came up through these holes here. These holes are for ventilation. If you look inside the box, this is all just bracketed together with pieces of bent sheet metal and sheet metal screws that are all cut off nice and neat so there's that and then here is the big uh, transformer I don't know how many volt amps this is I think it's around 800 and here are all the smoothing capacitors right here and then the rectifiers are mounted on this piece of angle that I've got mounted on here and that's you know acts as a heat sink for those because they do get warm now, it's still a little bit of a mystery to me what's behind this metal box. So I guess I'm going to have to take it off and have a better look. But I wish these wires were longer. If I could go back in the past and give myself hell for anything, it'd be to say, make the wires longer, John. You won't regret it. It's always a problem when you're building something like this. This cover is just a piece of... Looks like ductwork, actually, sheet metal that I bent into this shape, and it covers that and it shields that. Uh, when I look in here, I can see that, yes, this is definitely the soft start for the amplifier. But the thing underneath there, oh, I know what this is. I've got to stop the video here for a second and correct something that I was saying in the video here at this point. I was talking about a front end supply and a back end supply. And I did a little bit more research. I consulted my documentation on this amplifier and I uh, reminded myself that this is not actually for the front end. This is to power the Linkwitz transform. And it's also used to power the relay that's on the soft start board. There's also a small fan in the bottom here that I've got mounted on springs and I think I reduced the speed of it as well. And what that does is it uh, keeps air circulating up around these smaller components here to make sure that, that nothing overheats. Anyway, so that's it for this. I uh, just have to put it back together now. And first I'm gonna clean it out, blow the dust out and whatnot. But then I'll see if it actually works because I wanna do something with this in, in an upcoming video.